Howdy y'all, DJ TJ here with RollToWound.com. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Chris Keitch, the top Soul Black Gravelord player at the Lone Star Open GT. He went 4-1 with his Castellai Dynasty. Um, we're going to speak to him about his list and what how he thought it performed, what he liked, and what he didn't like. So, stick around. All right, guys, I'm here, and I have uh, Chris Keitch with me today. He was the top death player at the Lone Star Open. He runs Soul Black Gravelords. Keep in mind, guys, that his list and all the other um, top lists from the tournament will be on in the link in the description. So we've been doing a lot of Soul Black tactics lately, and I really wanted to bring you on just to talk about how Soul Black performed in a GT setting for you. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long you been playing? Where 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 you at? Where are you from? Who are you? Uh, my name's Chris Keitch. Uh, I'm from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I've pretty much born and raised, always lived there. Um, done a few things, but always came back. Um, I've been playing AOS since really since the first General's Handbook came out, and and there was actual a point system sort of met you playing tabletop sim which i didn't meet you in person in fact i didn't even see you on in i don't even think i saw a picture of you until we you know even when we played on tabletop sim it was always just voice yeah and uh so yeah he handed it to me on tabletop sim a few times and i was came to realize that he's a pretty good player um <laughs> and it was interesting because you recognize me it, when you saw me at the tournament and said hey i'm chris and i was like wait chris who and then it sort of clicked who you were yeah i would have recognized your voice too if, if we had started playing across the table from each other it's like hey are you <laughs> so have you always played death i know you played uh beastman against me before um i'm trying to remember what other games we had what is your primary army is it death uh, right now or is it yeah, always been death armies uh, i've had warhammer models since like 1999 like uh i collected uh, undead and vampire accounts uh so when that first general's handbook came out i started digging out all my old skeletons and i had an old black coach an old zombie dragon so i had all kinds of old models that i you know i could dig out and kind of start to play with and, and learn the game and then i just started adding to it and then um legions of nagash came out uh i think that was right before 2.0 came out so yeah i was off to the races once Le the legions of nagash book came out so I, I basically play all the death factions i've got obr soul blight night haunt so yeah. have, have you been liking a, a third edition so far i like it a lot it's i think it's an upgrade definitely to to where where we left off at 2.0 um i just like the, the interaction between both players the whole, the whole game um it, it takes a, a little bit longer especially if you're first starting out but um but i think it's a, a really good really good system really good core game uh, i i kind of agree I, I do like having all the um the command abilities and it's always something that i can do and think about do i need to save the cp for an over uh, i call it overwatch i still talk all the 40k terms mm -hmm. um unleash hells and um you know redeploys and things so do you think it's better straight up than second edition so far from what we've seen i think so far i mean it's it's got a steeper learning curve to it than any of the previous editions have had before but but once you get proficient at the the rules it's it's really like satisfying when you can pull off that that key redeploy or, or you know, give or take your flavor of command ability. Yep. So let's talk about the tournament a little bit here. Um, just your thoughts in general on the format, the scoring. Was there anything as far as we're looking at the battle pack or anything that jumped out that you liked or didn't like? Um, I liked that they uh, they represented like the the scoring as like a differential. So like. The wins and losses weren't like the overall 
you know, you get 60 points if you, if you win and zero points if you lost. If you were, if you were losing the game, you could still uh, score points that, that went towards your, your like, tournament score. And that's something that me and Matt had spoken about in our other video, which was like, it is very good because after looking at the final scores and results, you started really seeing like, man, if I would have just tried and got one more objective here or there, I could have jumped three or four, maybe even five people in the standings um, because, you know, there's very few points separating some of those spots. And it's like, it makes you want to play longer. It's not like turn two, okay, I'm dead. The game's over. I'm packing up, headed headed off. Right. Yeah, it's very it, that type of scoring was very incentivized. You know, play until the time runs out, or, or the game's over. Yes, or at least getting to a point where both of you and your opponent can talk things out. Like this yeah. is what I'm going to do. This is what you can do. You know, hey, well, we don't have to worry about that. Just do this one thing. If you make that roll, you've got that point. Right. Um. I, I I enjoyed I enjoyed the format I enjoyed the um, the one pager they handed out with with all the missions and everything really condensed and consolidated it was sort of easy they also had laminated score sheets that would draw race markers that that you and your opponent can sort of track as you went because there's a lot more tracking now with everything mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot more bookkeeping now and yeah the the tournament organizers did great with with making that that little uh, that tournament pack and having it available before you got to the uh, to the tournament so if you if you had a chance to look at it before you know you were you were all set so as far as the new you know i've been breaking down the the soul blight book um over the last few months um just general thoughts if i told you i got a i got soul blight book somebody's taking it to the tournament what's your thoughts in that i mean they're they're pretty fun to play you know if if anything um i think there's there's some good stuff in it. And, I mean, there's some bad stuff in it. I think it's a, a pretty pretty solid book. It just depends on depends on the player, really. Is there something in the book? Because I know you're long, you're an old time Death fan. When the book came out, was there something you were looking for? Like, hey, I hope they have this, or or anything like that. I guess I was kind of hoping for uh, something that could contend in the in the the shooting meta, <laughs> you know, OBR got catapults and, you know, I don't, I don't know what we could have got. <laughs> skeleton archers. Yeah. Skeleton archers. Um, that would, that would have been a cool thing to do. Um, I'd always, I'd always been, um, hoping that they had gone, you know, more, uh, uh more like into werewolves and, and other kind of, you know, old old spooky monsters um we kind of got that with with the, the werewolf dynasty and um the vangori lords they they were pretty weird looking when they first came out <laughs> yeah i think they've settled a little bit on people a little mm -hmm. bit more now that we've we've seen them so much mm -hmm. more um is there any if you're if you're building a list, obviously we'll get into your list here in a second. If you're if you're building a list, what are auto includes? What are you looking out of this book that you're saying, hey, I, I you should take you should be looking to take these in every list. Is there anything? Uh, for me, you should always try to fit a uh, a necromancer in. He he's just a he he can bring he brings the uh, called Lord of the Death Mages. Yeah, he, he brings those. So if you that's the better spell lore of of the two. So uh, if he's bringing Fading Vigor, Decrapify, Overwhelming Dread, any of those three are really really a good a good bet to to have in your list. And honestly, you're you're running the Castellai Dynasty, and you you seem to like your Blood Knights in your list. Um, is there any other dynasties that stick out to you that you like, or you want to experiment with, or try? Legion of Night, I would experiment with too, um, using Manfred, and uh, I think I think he's he's got some play. Um, I talked to another player at the tournament who who ran Manfred, that and then uh, Kit, Kit, I believe. Yep, gorgeous, gorgeous painted uh, Soulblight Grave Lord's army. Yep, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I. 
it's it's hard to remove Manfred unless you can shoot him, hand to dust him, or mortal wound him, I guess. All right, so let's move into the meat of the conversation. We're going to talk your list and um, start talk, diving into that a little bit. For everyone out there watching, I'm going to have the list on the screen, but I'm also going to have the link that you can go check out his list in further detail. Can you just go over what what is your list and, and what is it trying to do? What are you trying to do with this list when you set it down on the table? Uh, I'm, I mostly built it to be able to score, score a battle tactic every round um some are easier than others some would would net you a a bonus point um the list has a lot of three up saves which in the new edition it's pretty easy to get several things or you know a couple things if not several things to a, a two up save um there's some damage potential with with all the vampires uh all the vampires are fast um, the, uh, the vampire Lord on zombie dragon has the, uh, the fragment of the keep for, uh, the minus one to wound bubble, which saved his butt. <laughs> I don't know how many times. Um, and he, he's, he's just a monster to handle in, in combat with, with that on him. And, uh, I used Vordry to kind of back him up. So if he did, if my opponent did try to like pin my big monster in, Vordry could spend a command point, you know, at the in my hero phase and have the vampire lord on zombie dragon fight in the hero phase and, you know, clear something off and then, then he'd be ready to go charge and do something else. Um and I I found that the army went played a little bit better going second, just because you had that extra command point uh going going first uh it seemed like i would i would have just barely enough command points to turn on a an all-out defense or uh, or an all-out attack yeah and looking at the list is just insane to me because i just played with nagash and i was like very sparse on bodies it felt in board coverage um you know you're looking at your list you've got two big monsters a necromancer you know, three times five blood knights, then you got thirty death rattles and some um and some dogs. So you've got you've got all this stuff and it's just like, man, you can fit so much in a soul blight list in this edition. I have a lot of uh of flexibility with, with, with the list. I can have the skeletons sit back and hold an objective or uh send the dogs out to go you know, grab something in the middle. So let's talk about real quick, you know, still focused on your list. How do you think the Blood Knights performed? Did, we, did, did they do what you expected them to do, or were they a little bit underwhelming? They were fantastic. Like, I run in a competitive Soul Blight list. I, I would take Blood Knights every time. Um, just a three-up save, 10-inch ten, ten movement. Uh, the the wounds, you know, three wounds each, potential to get more, another wound, po- possible four wounds each. Um, I don't think I ever got them to an extra wound during the tournament, but I had plenty of times where I had extra damage, um, extra movement. Um, them being able to retreat and still charge in this edition was was very, very big. Yeah, you, they're, they're almost like you can't, they can't be locked down, which mm-hmm. is a thing that a lot of armies are doing right now. They're taking units just to lock other units up. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a good question because um, since the book came out, I have been in, you know, there's like two camps. There's like the Sparkle Vampire camp or the, the Werewolf camp. I'm in the zombie camp versus the, the, the skeleton camp. And I know that I, I've not really liked the skeleton war scroll. I think the zombie war scroll is better. Do, did you take the skeletons because that's all you had? Or did you prefer the skeletons over the zombies? Tell me why. I just, I just prefer the skeletons. Uh, I've got 60 zombies, you know, painted up, ready to go. But, uh, uh, I like the, uh, skeleton necromancer combo uh i like being able to um 
because in in combat, if if I want to fight first with another unit, I can. Uh, I don't have to go first with skeletons before they all die, or you know, before half the unit dies. I can I can let them hit my skeletons, and then I can bring the, the dead ones back. Or uh, if you know, if I have Van Hell's Dance Macabre, you know, I can do it twice. Yeah, and I'm seeing that more now that that. Because I guess early in, I didn't like the ability, because that was their trick. They lost all their extra swings. They lost a lot. But I said, bringing them back, you know, how many are you going to get back? I, I was still questioning that. But now I have came around a little bit more on the skeletons. I think they are a little bit more viable than I first thought, um, especially in this edition. And especially, like you said, with Dance Macabre. And there's so many other ways to, to buff them um, that, that I didn't see prior to this edition, I guess. And and I, I already wanted a necromancer in my list for um, for a decrepify um, in case I went up against giants or or another tough monster. Yeah. You know, he, he they're they're my prime target for a decrepify, um, which I did I did do that a a couple times during the tournament, and I mean it just it just neutered their ability to to wound. Yeah, and I think that you know. Obviously, the lore of Death Mages, personally, is we all know that that's a better lore. Um, there was times when I had, you know, three or four debuffs on an enemy with Nagash because I was able to cast everything. There was a giant that had, you know, um, it, he was minus one to hit, uh, minus one attack, minus one damage. Couldn't move unless he rolled a five, you know, if I rolled a five up. So there was all these things that you can stack these buffs on a big baddie in the opponent's army and just sort of say, yeah, I'm going to make you not hurt me. Because then if I'm they're swinging as your vampire lord, your vampire lord's already a three up. If you cast a mystic shield, they're a two up. And then guess what? All out defense for a one up. Um, and not much damage is going to go through. Uh, and then... It- and and then if you do damage him, heroic recovery on the next turn and you know, you heal D three wounds. Or or you slay something and, and slay a slay a small foot soldier guy and, and heal another D three wounds. Yeah, and, and something I've been thinking of, I, I did run Emerald Life Swarm in um in my list to heal things and I just think that Emerald Life Swarm in any soul blight list is is any, any, pretty much any because it doesn't matter what you're running. You can always, even if you're running hordes of zombies, you still can get, it's an extra, it's another way to get models back, and it's another way to keep your big monsters alive. And when you're healing possibly 3d3 a turn with a with a zombie dragon, not not too much, you know, somebody's going to have to focus fire it down with their with their big th- things to, um, to get that off the board. They're going to have to take them down in one turn. So, I mean, some of the questions I always ask is what drives damage? I mean, the whole list is, dam- you know, your two vampire lords and zombie dragons are damage dealers. Your blood knights are damage dealers. Your skeletons can be damage dealers, especially if they're going up against um, lightly armored, um, like a horde of something. Uh, and how did you find with the five blood knights of holding multiple objectives? Because you have one big block of skeletons, and that looks like, hey, that can sit, but how did you hold other objectives in this tournament? I had to pretty much just kill them off of, you know, if they were in the middle, I just had to kill them off of the, of the middle. Uh, I had a couple games where they would leave their you know, one, one back objective alone. And, and I would just send out the dire wolves to die basically. And then with my vampires, you know, killing a, killing a unit, getting an extra, uh, plus one or plus two to the uh, to the unquiet dead rule. Yeah. Um, you know, I I was able to bring back a unit of uh, dire wolves and and during my opponent's turn. Uh, so when it became my turn, those dogs could just run and go grab an objective. Um, but yeah, with with the blood knights, I would also use the blood knights kind of as a screen too. If they, if I had to push them out a little bit further to screen off my um, vampires on the zombie dragon, uh, so a lot of the times people just didn't want to mess with them. <laughs> but, but uh, they're just so fast they can they could get to them pretty easily. So I usually ask this question of people: if it's like. Um... What shenanigans does your list do? Uh, I'd I'd say the biggest yeah the biggest shenanigans that I have is the the skeletons and van 
Van Hale's combo, um, shift and keep. I would sometimes hold back a unit of Blood Knights in reserve, and uh, that just left my opponent something something to chew on. You know, where where are those Blood Knights going to come up from from the table edge? Uh, also, the uh, the command trait. Uh, if you if you run all of the um, vampires together, and say you're set up to have a really good you know turn one, whatever battle round it is, you just you just go forward with all the vampires and and hit hit um, rousing commander. Yep, yeah, pop rousing commander off and just hit their front lines and start. Start eating uh, units. Yeah, because that will because that's going to give everybody what it's extra damage. Um, it's extra attack, right? It's extra extra damage um, for all vampires wholly within twelve. So, um, blood knights go to damage three on their lances. Um, the vampire lords go to like damage five with their lances. And Prince Fordre, if he's uh, he's already cast Quick Blood, if they're yeah, if they're charging in, he gets the extra on his too. Mm-hmm. And I had a uh, flaming weapon on the non or my my vampire lord on zombie dragon. So he on the charge, he has uh, three attacks, rend two, six damage with his lance. Now my rolling wasn't very good. <laughs> With the, uh, with that, I think I only got maybe one attack through the whole the whole tournament at six damage. Um, I, I I'm in that that camp too. I fought in this this edition and in, with the new book. I have fought against uh, vampire lords on zombie dragons several times, and when they hit, they do exactly what you expect them to do. Mm-hmm. But I have faced them at least once a turn, at least once every game where you. you you just roll your dice and go. I did two damage with my zombie dragon, like, uh, and I don't know how that happens, but I've seen it happen to me several times. So it, it happened to me in this tournament several times. <laughs> so, and and it's weird too because if you look at their profile, it doesn't look like it's a swingy profile. Really, you look like mm-hmm. oh, I, it's a it should be a pretty consistent damage dealing profile, but I, for whatever reason, they just have the curse of. <laughs> let you down it's at the at the most inopportune time yeah yeah um all right so let's say that there was a tournament another gt next week are you making any changes to this list was there something that you didn't like and you want to or something you just want to try different yeah there's a there's a couple things i would try uh different um breaking up the skeletons um maybe have one of 20 and one of 10 um, or or three of ten, but I, I think I lean more towards the one of twenty, one of ten, um, because the thirty that I had, they didn't die. The you know the whole tournament, um, they they only got close once, um, but I think thirty is, might be a little bit of overkill with the way that I'm using them. I'm not I'm not putting them out in the front. Um, so maybe to have a 20 stay back and then a 10, you know, pop out from a grave site, um, let them die. And then that way I can start rolling for endless legions, every battle shock phase and, and, um, bring them up somewhere. Um, also something I thought about was maybe swapping Vordry out for, uh, Radicar the Beast. Uh, because Vordry's command ability, I I, ne- I only got it, only got use out of it maybe once. Because well, it's positioning or command points. It's it, yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to you have to have the positioning. You have to have the command points. Um, but with Radicar, as long as he charges, I think you can spend a command point and add an attack to to any soul blight unit um correct 
and it's so. gonna it's gonna give you ten extra free wolves, and he's cheaper than Vordra anyway, so you have extra room to add something else in too if you wanted. Exactly. I haven't I haven't tweaked it at all, but but that was kind of my thoughts. I don't even, I don't even have a, a Radicar of the Beast yet, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I think that he's viable in there, even though you're going to lose out on some of the Dynasty stuff with him. Um, I think that he's good in any Dynasty, that's my opinion. And that would be an interesting tweak, cause, but you do have two super heavy hitters where it is. They don't necessarily have to roll together. You could have, have them on different, even sides of the board. Did you ever find yourself doing that where you sort of set you know, five and one on five blood knights and one on one side, uh, five or ten blood knights and the other vampire and zombie drag on the other, and sort of do that. Or how did you actually field these guys? No, I just I used them uh, pretty much exclusively for the middle. <laughs> yeah, I put them in the middle, and and uh, I wanted them I wanted them to go places because <laughs> most of most of the scenarios, uh, yeah, it, it it boils down to holding holding the middle of the board did you um so moving off of the list um sort of moving on did you did you find as far as the tournament your games did you run up into any hardcore shooting lists i didn't um i played a i played a lumineth player but he only had um he had two units of 10 sentinels and two of the ballistas, um, his his army was primarily the the wardens. Uh, yeah, that I believe is James West. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's from here in Houston. Mm-hmm. And so that was the one thing too that I that I w- worry about with Soul Blight is because the lack of shooting, you can't counter battery fire. Sort of you you you're you're going to take shooting in the face every turn, and uh, that is a concern. I think. You know, it's always missions and matchups. I talk about it all the time in a tournament. It's missions and matchups. If you if you get good matchups, um, you're, you're going to do a lot better than if everybody you hit is your hard counter. So, right. Uh, I did play a, a KO player, um, a KO and Stormcast because I we also did the um, uh, the doubles before the before the singles tournament so they had some shooting and and it was i mean i basically ran the same list just scaled down um bi all all at defense i mean saved my uh zombie dragon so um how how did did you did you expect because you you went four and one but you had a correct you you went four and one but you had a lot of points um so you complete a lot of secondary objectives do you think you're were you expecting that? Uh not not really. I mean I was expecting maybe to be like in the top fifty percent of the of the tournament, but um no, not really not really a four and one, but after every every after every game I was like, Okay, this is this is pretty good. Then and they were also getting like harder games too, so I was like, Okay, this is this is doing pretty good, so see how far I can take it. Yeah, and I, you know, just looking at your total scores, you you didn't score super low on anything. It looked like every game, and you can sort of look, and that's the other cool thing about the way they've done the scoring, is that you can look at just the the box, I guess the box scores, what you'd call it, and go, oh, he he did well in all these games because you can tell by how many tactical objectives and things that you completed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I was winning my games, but not not terribly, you know, not just blowing out the opponent. Um, I think that the the Lumineth player, um, James, I only won by one point. And um, time was kind of an uh, an issue at that tournament, too, because uh, I don't think I ever really got out of the third round. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we pretty much, most of my games went to four or we at least talked out four and five. Um, but yes, time, you have to be moving. It's, it's, it, that it does tick by quickly. Um, especially with all the extra stuff and with people still learning. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your hardest game? Was that your hardest game or was the game you lost? Was which, what do you think your hardest game was? Uh, I think it would, would be the, the game that I lost just cause, 
it, it got very, very close at the end. I, I almost had a chance to, to tie. Um, but uh, uh, he, he was able to bring a model back with Rally, and then he was also able to um, slay one of my Blood Knights, which that was the one model difference where he got the objective and I didn't. Um, so it came down to it came down to a model, is what you're telling me. Yep. Yep, one model. And, I mean, um, so the, my hardest game, I think, was against, um, uh, I think his name's Noah. It was the uh, uh, Stormcast Hammers of Sigmar with four units of Annihilators. And uh, I had a game plan. I, I knew what his army did. And I just left uh, an opening for his annihilators to come down. And uh, as they dropped down, my necromancer died. And then from he their, from their mortal wounds for when they come in, they they explode yep. into bri brilliant light. Yep, they kill, killed off my necromancer. And then uh, he also had a Gavriel Sureheart. Uh, so he buffed buffed all their charges. And then they came in and charged, uh, and turn one, I lost my Necromancer and my Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon. Um, but I was, like I said, I was still able to almost bring it out to a tie. Yeah, because I guess the you know you you have we have pretty good rend against all the Stormcasts, and they're sort of low on model counts. Um, even though his list has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like eleven, twelve units in it. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're all small model count, um, five and three. So you're sort of just able to go and kill, go and kill, go and kill. Right. Yeah, my blood knights were doing doing good against his his other units, but he he had just tied up everything with those annihilators. You know, my my skeletons and my my vampires, um, and those annihilators were just pretty tough to shift at a, at a base two up save. Um, and I guess this sort of follows into that. Do you think that was your biggest tactical mistake of the whole tournament? Was that not screened properly? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I had all the tools that I needed to, to proper, properly screen. I could, I could have screened out my whole deployment zone. I mean, looking back at it, but I just didn't. Um, I, I took first turn. I got on all the objectives um, I kind of misunderstood how the scoring worked. I thought the center was two points each, but it's only two points if you one or the other, or, or one, both, doesn't matter. You, you score two points. Yep. Um, so instead of, instead of holding a unit of Blood Knights back or my skeletons to screen my backfield, that's where he, he got in. Uh, I try. I tried to do a uh, crimson keep charge with my blood knights, and and they failed. So, as far as you know, hobby plans go, and anything you're painting, what are you what are you doing now? What's on the painting table? What's the plan? Uh, still still working on those blood knights. I I got fifteen of them, you know, ready for the tournament. Um, but I you know I still want to push them a little bit further, like go to that higher tabletop standard um so so i'm gonna finish up those add some more stuff to my uh vore dry because i think he needs some love um and then in august next month uh i'm gonna do another a uh, thousand point tournament at my local gaming store um put that on is there anybody out there that you'd like to give a shout out to? Any 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 thanks, any praise, anything that you would uh, want to tell the world before we sign off? I guess just uh, to the to the tournament organizers, they did they did a pretty good job putting putting everything together. Um, all my opponents that I played against, I had you know nothing but uh, a positive experience with them. Um, they both you know they all knew their armies and. You know, if, if things didn't go their way, they didn't complain about it or um, frown on it too too bad. Um, so yeah, it was, it was overall a very very positive experience. All right, guys, that's all we got for the day. So appreciate everyone watching.
y'all <laughs> totally missing my own sign off like i've said it ten thousand times thanks for watching <laughs> y'all be good